Hi, and welcome back to X's and O's with Dan Orlasky. I'm Mike O'Hare, and once again, as always, brought to you by the good people of Xfinity. And Dan, we've got the Detroit Lions hosting the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday at Ford Field. Both teams coming off losses, 20-13 to for the Lions, and then the Cowboys lost 28-24 to the Minnesota Vikings. But before we get into that, the news of the day, the week, the month, the season, whatever, was Matthew Stafford sitting out last week's game in Chicago breaking his streak of 136 straight starts. You knew, you knew him personally, you knew him as a teammate. What did that mean to you and how shocking is that to, to see the Detroit Lions without number nine? Well, what it meant to me was, was it was serious. Was there was something that was worthy of him sitting out. I mean, it was as shocking to me as it was to anybody. One of the things that Matthew is known for is his toughness, his willingness to go out and play no matter what for himself, for his teammates, and for his last name and for the organization in the city. And so I was shocked he didn't play, but I was also happy in a way, Mike, to be honest with you, man, because if there's something that serious that's going to keep him to even contemplate being off the football field, it means it's worthy enough. Worthy enough. And I, was, I, I thought it was a good job by the doctors. And we'll see what happens going forward. Now, we've got a game to play at Ford Field on Sunday, 1 o'clock kickoff against the Cowboys. And the Cowboys lost that game uh, to, the, to the Vikings the other night, and they're 5-4 and four and trying to get back on track. Look, you know those people well. Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys, was a teammate. So was John Kitna, the quarterback's coach. Is there any sort of imprint from those two that you've seen in the Cowboys that you remember that maybe they were putting together as players and, and surfaces now? Well, the imprint is by both guys, and it's different. You know, Kitten has done a great job with Dak Prescott of getting him to play really methodical football, efficient football. Dak does not make mistakes. He doesn't turn the football over, and he's very accurate when he's making the right decisions, which he does often. And then Kellen, some creativity. Their, their offense has gotten really creative, creative with Kellen. They've done a nice job of utilizing everybody's strengths, and so each guy has had their own imprint. Okay, let's go to the X's and O's. We're going to start in the second quarter. Here's a 23-yard catch-and-run throw to Michael Gallup. Give us the X's and O's, Dan Orlowski. Break it down. Tell us what you see. Well, first of all, everyone thinks of the Cowboys, and they think it's like the, the, the triplets, right? They think it's Dak, they think it's Zeke, and then they think it's Amari. Well, Gallup has really come on as an important part of their football team. And what they love to do is put him on the opposite side of Amari Cooper. And so you'll see Amari go in motion here and down in the red zone. Minnesota is going to try and pass off up at the top this uh, route concept. Now, something that stands out is the route concept starts and, and happens because of the stack by the receivers up top. The receivers in the past with the Cowboys never really got into these stack formations. This is something that Kellen has brought. So they like to bring Amari to one side. How much attention are you going to uh, pay attention to him or how many people are you going to deploy to covering him? And then they'll keep Gallup on the other side because if you pay so much attention to Amari, you can get Gallup in some one-on-one -on -one situations that are really good for your offense. And it's just a shallow cross. They love bringing him on field crossing routes. He's not really their guy that they go downfield with or your straight stem vertical routes. He's more the guy that's going to work all the way across the field on crossers, shallows, and big ends. But they do it opposite Amari Cooper. So the, the communication on the back end, how they handle Cooper, will have a direct impact on how they handle Gallup. Well, Dan, Dan we talk about Amari Cooper, and you talk about a, a guy who's productive. He had 11 catches for 147 yards, a lot of them toe tappers, a lot of them sideline catches. Go into the third quarter here, there's a 12-yard catch. Break it down. Give us the X's and O's. Tell us what you see. Watch off the right when the clip shows. Look at the switch, the burst, the change by the offense. The tight ends up top. You've got the backs and the quarterback in the backfield. And then Dak comes from the slot all the way to the quarterback position. So you went receiver and two backs in the backfield. And then quarterback was in the slot. Now, before you switch everything. So you've got to, what's the plan? What formation is, is the offense in? What is the personnel and where are they? All that communication by the defense. Now the quarterback's back in the shotgun, and they're going to do something where it's, it's a basic naked mic, but the pre-snap movement forces such communication. Now, one of the things that Amari is doing so well is the understanding of the timing of a play. You're going to see him snap right back at the right time for Dak to have a place to throw this football. What was obvious was they were doing everything they could, Dallas, to get Amari Cooper on the corner that was not Xavier Rhodes. I would think they would try to do the same thing with the, the Lions. Get him on the corner 
that's not Darius Slay. And so the shift in the movement before the snap helps that happen. Then they get Cooper one-on-one with a corner that they like. And look at all the communication by the defense. The front, they don't know where to line up. The linebackers, what gap do I have? Who's got who in this zone coverage or man coverage down the red zone? How do we communicate through all this? So the Cowboys got to be, or the, the Lions have to be prepared for some different stuff. And this is the Kellen Moore effect. And then Amari's done such an outstanding job this season of making unique catches, sideline catches. Don't quit. You got to go through this play if you're the corner, all the way down to the ground with Amari Cooper because he's made so many toe tap or toe drag swag, as Nate Burleson, Nate Burleson would say, he's made so many of them. Well, that's 11 catches for 147 yards, and that was another good one right there. Now we're going to move along to the fourth quarter. We saw how the last time the Lions faced the Cowboys in Dallas, Zeke Elliott had one of his great games, 152 yards rushing, four catches for 88 yards, but only 20 carries for 47 yards last week against the Vikings. We have an RPO here in the fourth quarter, a five-yard gain. Dan, his long run of the day against the Vikings was six yards. Break it down. Give us the X's and O's. Tell us what you see on this one. Well, RPOs are a big part of this offense. They've they've totally evolved to an RPO offense, certainly in their two-by-two, two two receivers on one side, two receivers on the other side, spread formation. You know, this is what the thing thing that the, the Vikings did really well was, and I was surprised the Cowboys didn't change it. The Vikings put as many guys as they needed in the box. So if you had five in the box as an offense, they put six. If you had six in the box, they put seven. If you had seven, they put eight. So they outnumbered you by one. And they made sure that whoever was on the backside of the runs collapsed pretty good. And you can see 99 right there, Hunter, just doing a good job of keeping his shoulders square and then going after Zeke. So it was important, the guys on the front side, you can't give up space. Like you got, you can't give up ground. And then that backside needs to do a good job of playing in between and almost daring Dak Prescott to keep the football and not hand it off. I would imagine that the Cowboys would be a little bit more alert to this and potentially running um, Dak on some runs. But it was really important for them to initially outnumber the box. The Lions are going to have to commit people, commit an extra number down to the run. And like Jerry Jones said, put up a sign that Zeke wasn't going to beat them. Zeke's not going to run the football for a buck 50 plus on you and try to make the Cowboys pass game as good as it's been this year beat you. Well, Dan, before we make it a wrap for this week, do we assume that that Zeke Elliott is not going to run the ball well and we have to concentrate on Amari Cooper or just assume that all the guys are going to play their best and defend them that way? Yeah, I mean, Zeke is is on a Hall of Fame trajectory as a tailback, so I don't imagine he's going to pitch two games in a row that are poor. Amari's going to keep playing well, but I'm telling you, you got to pay. They've got some pieces. Gallup is an important piece of their offense. You got to try and hit Dak, and, and, and that's in, in the games that the Cowboys have lost. Teams have gotten after Dak just a little bit. Um, he's playing incredible football. It's a big challenge for their defense. Stop the run and pay attention to Amari Cooper is your best bet. All right, Dan Arlaski, that's it for this week. Sunday at Ford Field, Detroit Lions, Dallas Cowboys, kickoff 1 p.m.